Well, that's the last time we shall operate together. You sound very gloomy. You're determined to go? Quite. Well, I suppose in your language that means... Quite. Quite. Yeah. And where's Dr. Wyatt going? Into the wilds to work for a mad brain specialist. Eccentric. Dr. Lorenz of Genoa. Well, his record is a little unorthodox. It wasn't when I worked with him in Genoa. You'll find it very different now. Anyway, take care of yourself. I will. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, sister. Now, seriously, Ken, I should think twice before going. But why? Lorenz has done brilliant work. No, not in the past three years. You know, they threw him out of Genoa. His ideas became impossible. There's something queer about him now. There's always something queer about a genius. You're set on going? Quite. I suppose in your language, that means quite, eh? <laughs> Hello, why aren't you in Fleet Street? I've been checking up on Lorenz, and he's not the kind of thing a young girl should know. Dick, we've been over that before. Oh, but you don't know the half of it. He's arrived in England with a couple of monkeys and claims he's discovering the human soul. He wrote and asked me to go, and I'm going. I've got a far better plan. What? Stay here and marry me. Dick. Oh, I know I mentioned it before, but you always get the answer wrong. <laughs> I must go, Dick. It's my job. Hmm, you're going to be awkward. Not awkward, dear, just firm. Well, in that case... What's that for? I'm coming with you. You're doing nothing of the sort. But you need someone to look after you. Sorry, Dick, but I specialise in looking after myself. Then I've packed my bag for nothing. I'm afraid so. How I hate strong-minded women. <laughs> you for the manor? Yes. Dr. Wyatt, I presume. Didn't I tell you I could look after myself? You did? Well, then. I persuaded my editor that there was a story in Lorenz and caught the train you missed. You're very sweet, darling. But when I say a thing... Go on, driver. Hey! What about my interview? There isn't going to be an interview. If the monkeys eat you, don't blame me. Half a crown, miss. Can't you take me to the door? I don't go to that door. The name is Clayton, one of the doctor's more hopeless cases. Come in. Intercranial cyst. Rare and very curious. But I thought... Go on. Say it. I thought that was always fatal. Most of me is dead. The rest of me is damned. Lorenz manages to keep the residue alive. Why is his own affair? I'm terribly sorry. Oh, don't worry about me. You'll find Lorenz in there. Dr. Lorenz! I am glad to see you. I thought... You're thinking that I am changed. You're right. I am changed. The leading surgeon in Genoa. The greatest authority upon the human brain until I told them something about their own brain. Then they said I was mad. Look at me. Am I mad? Is she to have a room? Of course, of course, there are lots of rooms. Take any one you like. Haven't you a housekeeper? Only Clayton, you've seen him. And she was not amused. Why did you send for me? 
You might have had an experienced scientist. I don't want experienced scientists. Their minds are set. Like trains, they run only to the terminus and back again to the beginning. But I remembered you in Genoa. You were so young, a child, but you had faith in what was new and courage to face things. And now you shall work with me here, and I shall show you strange things about the mind of man. You will follow me without fear. Without fear. Well, did her ladyship like her room? You didn't want her to come here. I don't like women. I had to have help in my work. But why choose a woman? She's a scientist. A female scientist? Well? All tears and hysterics and can't keep a secret. She wanted to work with me and she's going to. Have you told her exactly what your work is? Not yet. Why not tell her? Then perhaps she may change her mind. You know why there are no servants in this house? Because they won't stay here. They were scared out of their lives. How do you know? Your cabbie told me. Lorenz is a scientist with a great reputation. Yes, you should hear what they say in the village. I don't care what they say in the village. Anyway, the whole thing seems fishy to me. Will you please go? You, I won't. I'll be at the Red Bull. Will you promise to send for me if anything happens? All right, I promise. Anyone there? No. Why? Sorry, I, I thought I heard voices. Good night. Good night. Great scientist's assistant washing up a coffee pot. When did you wash it last? Never. I thought not. Well, why wash it when it's never used for anything else? You didn't like me coming here, did you? You don't like me. I'm sorry for you. I wonder which revolts you most. My miserable body or my perverted mind. You think, why doesn't Lorenz let him die? Well, I'll tell you. Because I'm the only person who understands him. I understand him. You understand, Lorenz? One day you'll realize how little you do. You didn't know you told me all that. I told you nothing. I heard you. Lucky Lorenz won't see it. Why not? They don't have no paper at the manor. If I don't come back, drag the lake. Where are you going? The manor to enroll another certified reader. Certified's right. Hello. I came to see if you were still all right. Well, am I? Apparently. Come for a walk on the estate. Listen, darling, you don't seem to realize I'm here on a serious job. You're just trying to make it more difficult. I'm trying to make it impossible. Well, don't. I promise I'll come back as soon as I can. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. You don't like serious jobs. On the contrary. All my own work. Take a look. I will. Goodbye. It's the first time you've taken any interest in food since you've been here. It's the first time there's been any. Come, come, come now. Let's get back to work. What's wrong? Nothing. Huh. This 
may amuse you. You told them all this. Me? Why me? How should I know? Your mind is as twisted as your body. Don't forget, if I leave out one injection... I don't mind dying, but to be accused of journalism. This is a very good story. Yes, Lord Hazelwood. I like it very much. Uh, yes, Lord Hazelwood. You agree with me? Uh, yes, Lord Hazelwood. Then why is it hidden away at the bottom of a column? Of course, I know it was your son's story, but... Nothing whatever to do with it. My son must be treated as if he were an ordinary person. In my opinion, these stories... Why have I spent a fortune on scientific research? Because in these days, it's news. But this fellow Lorenz... He... News. Properly treated, front-page news. If you say so. I don't say so. It's a fact. But I have other views. There are no other views. Then what do you want us to do? Nothing. You know I never interfere in the conduct of my papers. Then we can forget Lorenz. Most certainly not. I'm going down to see him myself. A human brain. A brain like the one in here. The same color, appearance, everything. Only one difference. The thoughts in the brain, the personality, the mind are all missing. The brain is dead. That means only this, that what I call the thought content of the brain has gone forever. Until now, it has never been possible as it were, extract the thought content from a living brain and leave it alive but empty. I can do it. I can take the thought content from the mind of a living animal and store it as you would store electricity. Wait. Just like going to sleep. could take this mind and put it in the body of another animal? Of course, but you can't. Tonight I'm going to try for the first time. the one ape is there, the other is there. I reverse the connection.
something changed over. Does that prove it? Each has got the mind of the other, the personality, the likes, the dislikes. The thing that if they were human beings, we would call the soul. If they were human beings? Why not? You can't do that. No. I can't do that. Ah, Richard, I'm delighted to see you. And I'm delighted to see you. I came to congratulate you on your story. All this way for that? Precisely. It's good work, and I'm happy to acknowledge it as such. Thank you, Father. You seem on good terms with Lawrence. Oh, charming fellow. He welcomed me with open arms. Friendly, eh? Absolutely. I want you to introduce me. I'm afraid I couldn't do that. Why not? Well, I've got to get back to London. No, 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 nonsense. You take me to see Lawrence. I'm looking forward to an interesting meeting. You'll get it. I'm sure I shall. But all you have to do is to introduce yourself. No, no, no. Now, don't tell me he doesn't know who you are. The Hazelwood Institute. All you've done in the cause of science. Mm. He'll be delighted to see you. Yes, yes, perhaps you're right. Father, I hope I am. Hazelwood of the press. Dr. Lawrence, good morning. Forgive my coming here unheralded, if I may use the term. But I imagine my name is not unknown to you. I do not receive the press. If you are thinking of my newspapers... You're here to spy on me. On the contrary, my dear sir, I am here to make you an offer. I am not a journalist and I am not for sale. Were this a press visit, I should hardly have attended in person. Then why are you here? In the interests of science. You are a great scientist, one of the most distinguished. Well? In a small and humble way, I also worship at the shrine. Doubtless you've heard of the research institute which bears my name. The biggest thing of its kind in Europe. It is at your disposal. Any conditions? None at all, except that our results should be given to the world. Through the medium of the Hazelwood Press? Naturally. My result will be revolutionary. All the better. May I take it, Dr. Lawrence, that you agree? You'll be sorry if you do. I must work in my own way. How can you work in this atmosphere? If you refer to the smell of bacon, it is no obstacle to scientific research. I must keep my freedom. What freedom have you here? How can you work like this? You need the finest laboratory you can get. You must accept. Very well. I accept. Yes, very satisfactory, gentlemen. Very satisfactory. I venture to say that public interest has never run so high. I'm a bit worried about some of the contents bills. Mm. Why worried? Don't you think they're a trifle flamboyant? Nothing of the sort. By my express instructions, simplicity has always been our keynote. I think they're definitely cheap. Simplicity is never cheap. I look upon this as a mission of enlightenment, and we must ensure a proper impact upon the public. I shall wish you to write a special leader, something on science and the human mind, with perhaps a thoughtful mention of Freud, and a reference to the part my paper plays in furthering the process of evolution. Splashing Lorenz. Naturally, naturally. You might use a photograph. There's an excellent one of us taken together. We must never rest until we have made Lorenz a household word. But no one knows what he's done. No one knows if he's any good. I flatter myself that I know genius when I see it. In due course, I shall arrange for his results to be announced. The scientific world will be fully represented. Uh, later, perhaps, you would like to consult with me as to the exact form the invitations will take. Professor. What are you going to infuriate me with this time? Don't ask me, ask Lawrence. Your laboratory he's using, isn't it? Yes, specially equipped for him. And I think I can promise you a surprise. I'm not partial to surprises. You see, the flower of English science. They seem to have wilted a little. I take that as a personal insult. 
I'm a scientist myself. Really? All right. One of these days you'll be proud to know me. Wouldn't you rather marry me instead? Definitely not. Definitely not? Definitely not. Have you seen Lawrence? No, my lord. Where is Lawrence? We start in precisely three minutes. I'll go and find him. Pull yourself up, boy. The finest laboratory you can get. And you've sold yourself for it. They're waiting for you. Hazelwood's having a fit. I forgot I was busy. Why do they have to have this meeting now? Where's your coat? Uh, there. I dislike having to publish before the work is ready. Now, don't you worry. Well, why can't they wait till I'm finished? Now, then, my notes. Where are they? Here they are. Oh, yes. Now, uh, then. Nervous? Why should I be? Dr. Lawrence has been working for some weeks in the Hazelwood Laboratories, and tonight we are privileged to hear his first account of the results he has obtained. Tomorrow they will be published in every organ of the Hazelwood Press. Tonight it is for you to hear and to judge. I do not propose to stand any longer between you and uh, Dr. Lawrence. Lord Hazelwood, ladies and gentlemen, I bring you a new knowledge of the human mind, a new conception of the relation of mind and body, a new power. My experiment. experiments that I have described show that the mind, the thought content, can be, uh, can exist independently. The body is a mere receptacle, is in fact comparatively unimportant. They also show that I, uh, that we now have the power to take the mind of one animal and transfer it into the body of another. After the change, the second animal will therefore assume the characteristics the fears, the likes and dislikes of the first animal. This I have proved to be a fact. I have been able to take the mind of one chimpanzee and transfer it into the body of another. Uh, may I ask a question? If Professor Holloway wishes to ask questions, he really must wait until the lecture is over. <laughs> well, in that case... Are we to understand that you are serious in putting forward these views? Entirely. And you seriously maintain that the experiments you describe have actually taken place? I do. <laughs> Thank you. That's all I wanted to know. If I'm lucky enough to pick up a taxi, I can get to Olympia by 10 o'clock. I understand the circus there is excellent. <laughs> See what you've done with your ridiculous claims. I will go on. You must listen. You fools. You heard what I can do today. Now you shall hear what I can do tomorrow. All that has been done with animals can be done with man, with you. There is one of you who can't use what I can give you. Take your minds from your miserable pet bodies and put them into bodies that are strong and young. All right. When you lie on your deathbed, I shall laugh to think of all that you've refused. You heard what I told them. I shall prove once and for all that I told the truth. We'll make the final experiment, this time on myself. You can't do that. Don't forget your promise to follow me without fear. I know. But your own mind, it's sacred. Sacred? <laughs> Ask them in there. Come on, please, where's Clayton? I'm not going to help you. But you must. Without you, it's impossible. I know. That's why I'm not going to help you. 
Oh, you two are against me. You know I'm not. You don't know what you're doing. Tomorrow, everything will be different. No, no, it won't be different. The only way to convince them is an experiment on man himself. Then you must work alone. I can't stay with you. You must. We work so well together, we understand each other. Don't you see? I can't work without you. What do you want? You must be perfectly aware of what I want. Lord Hazel. Please excuse me. I wish to speak to Dr. Lawrence. I wish to speak to him alone. Dr. Lawrence, I am grieved, deeply grieved at what has occurred. This is a poor reward for the trust I placed in you. It is my painful duty to ask you to leave my institute. You want to turn me out? I have no choice. And this is what comes of having anything to do with your filthy newspapers. Please control yourself. Go on with my work. I shall publish my results in my own way. You do nothing of the sort. I hold the copyright and I shall take possession of your papers. I shan't give them up. You won't be consulted. You signed an agreement. The law will enforce it. You dirty swindler. Violence won't help you. You think you've beaten me? You and your money will. You haven't. You haven't. If I leave here, I'll take all this with me. On the contrary, it stays here. And tomorrow I shall have it destroyed. I designed it. I built it. With my money in my institute. You used my name with the sort of crackery that wouldn't deceive a schoolboy. But now you're finished here. And your apparatus is trying to do exactly what I like with. You shan't touch it. <laughs> I paid for everything. I paid for everything. I paid for everything. The finest laboratory in the world, and you sold yourself for it. I did claim to do too much. It was foolish of me to try to deceive you. Send me away if you like. Take back everything that you've given me. But first, I want to show you something. I'm afraid it's quite... I only ask you to stay one moment. My time is valuable. I won't waste it. Please sit down. I'm afraid this is the only chair I have to offer you. You must understand that once my mind is made up... You will not change it. Perhaps I can do it for you. What's the meaning of this? A new experiment and you will be the subject of it. Let me go! You'll suffer for this. What are you afraid of? Quackery that wouldn't deceive a schoolboy? What, Dr. Lawrence? You said so yourself. Dr. Lawrence! You're Lawrence. fond of the sound of your own voice. Well, listen to it. This room that you so kindly built for me is entirely soundproof. What are you going to do? You called me a cheat and a charlatan. Now you're going to help in an experiment to prove that I am not. Let him change bodies with you, Clayton. Might be amusing. Might be dangerous. I've nothing to lose. And his lordship is bursting with enthusiasm. You, you can't do it! You can't do it! You can't do it! It's not an experiment!
Clayton. Clayton. Formerly the property of the first Baron Hazelwood. Not bad. A trifle fat in the usual places. Let's hope that mine will triumph over matter. Walk. Walk? Walk! Well, don't rush me. I haven't touched anything for 30 years. Hmm. A much overrated occupation. I wish you'd treat my body with more consideration. After all, you're only the temporary tenant. Temporary? Why temporary? Hazelwood came here to throw me out to smash all this. But if you remain Hazelwood... Why not? I don't grudge Hazelwood my body. He deserves it. He needn't have it long. I don't have to go on keeping him alive. No, no, it's murder! Exactly, my lord. The perfect murder. Death from natural causes. In the meantime, thanks for the sound body. <laughs> Dead. That settles it. it. Settles more than you think. I meant my work to be given to the world, to be used for the common good. But they wouldn't have it. They wouldn't believe me. They laughed at me. All right. I'll keep it to myself. I'll use it for myself. And I'll use it for my own end. Cashier? Good morning, Lord Hazelwood. Good morning. I want some money. Certainly. The usual amount? Yes, I suppose so. Send it straight up. Better make it double. Very good, Lord Hazelwood. And my uh, devotion to this great organ is not merely a matter of pound shillings and pence. Semicolon. It is something deeper, which inspires me, as I know it inspires you to dedicate my life, capital L, to its service. From the cashier's office, my lord. Oh, uh, thank you. I think you'll find it correct. I hope so. I hope so. <coughs> Good morning. Uh, this is Thursday, Lord Hazelwood. Yes, of course. Thursday. I take it you were expecting us. Well, uh, not exactly. I hope you're not thinking of discontinuing these meetings. Uh, most certainly not. Well, what business have we? First and foremost, the Lorraine's affair. Now, in view of last night's unfortunate development, I have taken the liberty of toning down the story. Of course, we shall have to change the leader. Why? My leader on the benefits of science would seem a trifle out of place. I suggest we might get out of it gracefully if we gave Lorraine's a nervous breakdown. Good idea. And get his doctor to order him away. Somewhere yeah. remote. I disagree. It is most important that he should continue his experiments. You're not going on with this man? Most certainly I am. The fellow's a charlatan. How do you know? You told me so last night. Did I? I judged hastily. <laughs> Let this be a lesson to you. Never judge hastily. But we can't go on. I agree that at the moment, too much publicity would be embarrassing to us all, particularly myself. But uh, Lorentz will continue to work under my protection. By the way, you might arrange to let him have an extra couple of thousands for expenses. But Lord Hazel, Hazel. the matter is closed. Nothing more? Yes, there is. You promised us at the last meeting a declaration of policy. Did I? Isn't that so, Miss Briggs? Why, yes, Mr. Gray. If Miss Briggs says so. Are we to continue to press the Prime Minister? Always press the Prime Minister. And what about the point Mr. Gray raised last time? Exactly. 
My view is unaltered. I don't remember you expressing any view. Mr. Gray, if you cannot remember what I told you, you can hardly expect me to repeat it all now. What about page seven? Well, what about page seven? You promised me a decision today. I pay you to make decisions. You must make up your mind yourself. Well, if you're leaving it to me... You really intend, Mr. Saunders, to control page seven? It's not in your province. That's the feature What am I going to do? It means an entirely new makeup. Not... Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. I have never been spoken to like this in my life. What do our private feelings matter? I, too, have my objections, but my devotion to this great organ is something deeper, which inspires me, as I know it inspires you, to dedicate my life with a capital L to its service. <clears throat> uh, thank you, gentlemen. That will be all, Miss Briggs. Miss Briggs? Yes? What's the matter? Why, that's the first time you've called me Miss Briggs since Ostend. Hazelwood. I'm afraid I shall have to find out a little more about you. Well, this is the last time I shall go in here. Now, don't get sentimental. Hurry up and get your things. <laughs> All right. last night. I contrived to convince Lord Hazelwood of the truth of my theories. You're going on with your work here? On human beings? Not even you can stop that. In that case... You're not going to leave me. This new power, I can share it only with you, for you alone are worthy to receive it. Today I see you clearly for the first time. Now I know why I wanted you to work with me, and you know why you have to stay. No. I understand. I'm old. But don't you see, with this new part, I needn't remain old. I could take a new body, a young body, and keep my own brain. And you too. You won't always be young. When you grow old, I can give you a new body. Think of it. I offer you eternal youth, eternal loveliness. was there. You know, he's changed. Something's happened to him. Probably a touch of liver. I told him I was going to marry you. You are? <laughs> yes, I think I am now. Educated Eton and Trinity Cambridge. Very gratifying. I'm learning a lot about myself. Please pay attention. If Hazelwood is to have a future, he must know his past. Married Frances Amelia. Sounds interesting. No, oh, sorry, she's dead. Clayton, will you listen to me? Do you realize you're addressing the man who made 60 against Oxford in 1900. I want your son to come here. Hobbies, hard work. Oh, what a pompous ass I am. I want your son to come here. Why? I think it's time I met him. I feel it's time I met him myself. We'll invite him. What's his first name? 
Good evening, sir. Good evening, Bates. Surprised to see me. Yes, sir. I'm going to get married. And I think my father ought to know. Congratulations, sir. Hello. Yes? Don't look at me like that. I've come for a father's blessing. Oh, come in, my boy. Delighted to see you. I was just phoning you. You're in good form tonight. Never felt better in my life. Have a cigar? Thanks, but I'm still a non-smoker. Oh, yes, of course. I was thinking of someone else. Oh, uh, this is Dr. Lawrence. Good evening, Doctor. I've heard all about you from my assistant. Oh, yes, that's why I'm here. I want to marry her. Oh, and what would you expect your father to say to that? I wish I knew. And what does the doctor say to it? I think you'd make a splendid couple. You don't look as though you'd had a day's illness in your life, have you? Not that I remember. Have I? Not that I remember. Ah, a sound mind and a sound body. I shouldn't be too sure about the mind. You play games? Yes, I played rugger at Cambridge. Any rowing? A little. Heart stand up to it all right? <laughs> what is this, a medical examination? <laughs> you must excuse me, I'm a doctor, you know. Well, I think I can safely leave you two to talk over family matters. I must get back. Thinking up some new gadget, I suppose. Exactly. I'll show it to you sometime. Good night. Good night. You and Lorenz seem pretty thick these days. He's a brilliant fellow. Have a drink? Thanks. I hope he's looking after you all right. Me? Why me? That's what he's here for, isn't it? Hmm. Remember what Dr. Thornhill told you? Yes, of course. Is the heart still bumping? Yes, I suppose so. I hope you're taking that stuff he gave you. Yes, yes, yes. Well, take care of yourself. I'm in no hurry to inherit the title. I'm in no hurry to part with it. You don't think I'm looking any worse, do you? No. Perhaps I have been overdoing it a bit lately. Hey, what about that? Well, I thought all alcohol was strictly forbidden. Yes. I thought the occasion called for a drink. Oh, that reminds me. I have a date with Claire. I mustn't keep her waiting. Good night, Father. Good night, my boy. I don't blame you for breaking out, but take it easy. I hope I'm not late. Exactly nine and a half minutes. I shall be quarter of an hour. <laughs> Sit down, I'm busy. I dropped in on the way to break the news to my esteemed father. Did you leave peaceably or were you assisted? Oh, most peaceably. He was full of fun. Practically gave us his blessing. That's a bit of a change, isn't it? For him, I mean. A change? Why, he was a different person. What do you mean? Well, he's never exactly fawned on me. We've lived mostly in splendid isolation. But tonight he was quite human. Was... was Lorenz there? Yes. He's a queer fellow. Father and he seem as thick as thieves. When I arrived, I thought I was for it. The old man looked at me as if he'd never seen me before. But he soon came round. Did you notice anything else queer? Well, now you mention it, he did seem to be spreading himself a bit, doing all the things the doctor told him not to. He wasn't worrying about his heart at all until I remind... What's the matter? Do you mind if we don't go out tonight? Why ever not? Please don't ask me now. I'll tell you later. What on earth's the matter? Listen, darling, I want you to go. There's something I must find out. It may be nothing. But, Claire... Please, Dick, you must trust me. Of course I trust you. I'm dreadfully sorry, darling. I'll, I'll explain everything later. You will have to. Will you get me a taxi, please? <laughs> I knew you'd come back. I want to ask you something. Anything wrong? What has happened to Lord Hazelwood? So far as I know, nothing. What have you done to him? I don't understand. He's your friend now. Why not? After Clayton died. Clayton? It's only a matter of time. So Clayton died? I'm afraid so. And now Hazelwood's your friend. I don't see the point. 
Do you think I don't realize what you've done? Well, just what have I done? You always believed you could exchange human minds. I still do. Because you've done it with Clayton and Hazelwood. You can't be serious. Why did Clayton die? Well, his was a hopeless case. You know that as well as I do. You could have kept him alive. Well, yes. I'll tell you the truth. When you left me, you made it impossible for me to experiment upon myself. Clayton was an incurable invalid, tired of life. You used him? Yes. Him alone? And he died. I'm afraid the shock was too great for him. Dick says his father's changed. A different man. I was there myself. I saw nothing unusual. I prefer to believe his own son. You're not easy to convince. No. How can anybody prove whether you're right or wrong? After all, Hazelwood is here. Physically and mentally. Mentally? Of course. Tomorrow I'm going to see Hazelwood and I'm taking Dick too. If he is Clayton... Do you still suspect me? Yes, I do. And this is to be a test? It is. Let me tell you... There's no need. Tomorrow I shall find out. Tomorrow. This is important. I want you to... What's the matter? You look as though you'd seen a ghost. I have. My own. Do you mean? You remember how Hazelwood laughed in my body before he died? Well? I found out why. He was in my dressing room. Heart disease. Yes. Hazelwood knew. That's why he laughed. Probably the only joke he ever saw in his life. From my crippled body to Hazelwood's diseased body. From the frying pan into the fire. You must do another experiment, only this time give me a sound body. Whose? His son. My son. Dick Hazelwood. What? I've got it all worked out. Here's Hazelwood's will, leaving everything to Dick. I shall inherit my own fortune. Rather pretty, eh? <laughs> We've only to get him to the Institute and you can do the rest. Yes. I can do the rest. A big story. It'll have to be to get me out of this hour. All right, if it's as important as all that, I'll come down to the Institute right away. Coming? The true journalistic instinct gets it from me, you know. So come along, you'll need time. What are you waiting for? We are not going. Oh, why not? I shall not perform an experiment on you. Why not? It doesn't suit me. Don't be temperamental, and don't think I'm threatening you, but I am in rather a strong position, thanks to you. As Hazelwood, I own the place you work in. I pay for your food, cigarettes, everything. You're absolutely dependent on me. And having been a cripple for 30 years, I've rather a nasty nature. A word from me and you'll be discredited. A charlatan. No, oh, I know you don't like the word, but we wouldn't mince matters in the Hazelwood press. Where would you go then? Back to Genoa? So all things considered, I think we'll go to the laboratory. I shall go, but you will not. No? Oh, why not? Because you won't take part in this experiment. Because you'll be dead. <laughs> No further need for you. Thanks to you, the boy's on his way to the Institute. Well, I'll take his body and he'll take mine. The body that'll be hanged for murder. You rang, sir? Yes. Please do not disturb Lord Hazelwood for the moment. Very good, sir. His hot milk at the usual time? At the usual time. Oh, excuse me, officer. Could you tell me the time? About ten before ten, sir. Hmm. Thank you. It's a nice night, isn't it? Yes, sir. Good night. Good night, sir. Hello? Will you get me well back? Three, six, double, seven. Good night, Jimmy. Good night, sir. Here's the Wood Institute. Sorry, I'm a bit early, sir, but...
Give me the police. Good night. Come in. He'll be here directly. What's his new story he's after? He'll tell you that himself. Cigarette? No, thanks. Oh, I forgot. You don't smoke, do you? Is that the new gadget you were talking about? Yes. Let me show you. Now, suppose I'm experimenting on two animals. These show how the experiment is progressing. The mind of one slowly filtering into the mind of the other. It's all rather beyond me. Yes, I suppose it is. What are these for? They're used to measure the beat of the animal's heart. I have to watch that, you know. I'm sorry for the animals. One's always sorry for the animals. So you see, when I want to work the controls automatically, I use this. And it works by itself. That's clever. I can't imagine how you people ever think of these things. When one has a purpose, it makes all the difference. Hello? Do you know where Mr. Hazelwood is? He's gone out. Hazelwood Institute. What are you doing? Let me out of this. Not yet. I need something first. Don't you see? I take your body, your name, and Claire. And you? You take mine. The body of the man the police were hanged for murder. The body of the man who killed Hazelwood. I killed him in his study an hour ago, and I left plenty of evidence to prove that Lorenz is the murderer. But by the time the police get here, you will be Lorenz. Let me out! Let me out of this! Let me out! Let me out!
Jack. Huh? How is he? There's no hope. How long will it be? A matter of minutes. But it's not Lorenz. Lorenz is up there. Don't you see? He's done what he said he could. Then this is... Dick Hazelwood. And he's dying. He's dying. Better get a statement if we can. You go along with him to the hospital. Listen, I've watched Lorenz. I could do the experiment. Undo what he's done. There isn't time. There's a chance. There must be a chance. We've got to get him in there. Sorry, miss. We're taking him to hospital. He's under arrest. He killed Lord Hazelwood. He killed? Get him into the ambulance. You must help me. You must. You must. I'm from the hospital. I take full responsibility. I'm sorry, sir. Yeah, but I'm a doctor. Immediate treatment here may save a man's life. Will you give me 20 minutes? All right. 20 minutes. Come on. Turn on the oxygen. you to, to promise me something, destroy all this, this power is too dangerous, promise me. I promise. Strange, strange that only in death I should be believed. 